This is Nursing 622, Module 6, Gender-Related Health Problems, Focusing on Women's Health. Building on the previous lecture, uh, objectives, common gynecological disorders for females, treating these common uh, disorders. Common reproductive complaints, uh, family planning. You know, pregnancy is something a lot of women want to talk about a lot, prevention, planning interventions. And then where do I go if I can't get pregnant? How long do I try for? What are my resources in the community? And understanding where to refer them out to is important. Understanding birth control, the difference between IUD, the implants that they can have done with oral antiseptives, barrier methods, spermicidal creams and ointments, fertility awareness. These are all discussions that need to be had with these patients. And again, know what you don't know and refer them out. Breast mass, lump in the breast. Is it secondary to having a previous mastitis? Is it secondary to breastfeeding? Do they have a family history of breast cancer? These are all important things why a health history is so important. Treatment should be mammogram initially, followed by an ultrasound, then ultimately a biopsy, but we have referred them out when we have found abnormal mammograms and ultrasounds. So then a definitive diagnosis can be done by biopsy by GYN or GYN oncology. Abnormal uterine bleeding. This comes from the endometrium of the, the uterus. Um, no demonstrable organic cause. It can be abnormal. It can be secondary distress. It can be secondary to medication. There's many causes and sometimes it's idiopathic. Management is directed towards controlling the bleeding and preventing a reoccurrence. But with that being said, we have ruled out other causes of abnormal uterine bleeding. Remember, are they premenopausal, postmenopausal, or are they of childbearing age? Why are they having the abnormal uterine bleeding? What other signs and symptoms are they having? Are they having unilateral abdominal pain? Are we concerned about an ectopic pregnancy if they're of childbearing age? Is it actual uterine bleeding or is it vaginal? Obtaining urinalysis, further investigation is warranted. Dyspareunia, which is painful intercourse with sex. Um, this can be secondary to, we hear about honeymooner cystitis. If there has been trauma with sexual intercourse, if it has been somewhat rough, they can have painful sexual intercourse. There are multiple different factors that play a role in this. Do they have an IUD? Is the IUD dislodged? Has there been an issue with that? Is there different positions that they have dyspareunia? You have to be comfortable having these conversations with patients. Is it with normal sexual positions? Were you doing different positions? Did you feel the penetration was deeper? And as odd as that sounds, it is very important to help you direct your goals and treatment for these patients. Nocturia, frequency of urination at night. Again, this can be multiple factors. Are they pregnant? Is there a possibility they're pregnant? Are they aging? And this is a normal aging process that can come into play. Are they pre-diabetic? Are they diabetic? Is that why they're having the polyuria? Have we looked at their fasting glucose? Is it an impaired fasting glucose? What is their hemoglobin A1C? These are all things that are a concern. Sign of prostate problem, that's just in there because we had talked about nocturia, that is for men, but also you have to worry about the transgender. So I left that in there to have that transgender conversation of, are they identifying as a female, but technically they are still a male? You have to worry about these problems of a prostate, even though they're identifying as a female. Chronic pelvic pain in women could be GU based, could be GI, could be musculoskeletal, just like with the male, could be back pain. There's multiple things that can come into play with this that can cause pain. Vulvovaginitis is simultaneous inflammation of the vulva and vagina. What is the causative agent? What is the factor? Do they have bacterial vaginosis because there was a change in the pH of the vagina? Do they have a yeast infection? They recently were on antibiotics or steroid therapy. Are they diabetic, pre-diabetic? These are all things that come into play. Vaginal itching, burning, discharge. What does the discharge look like? 
Do they have a urinary tract infection? Have we ruled out a UTI? Have we done a pelvic exam and done pelvic cultures to rule out an STD? This is why health history is so important and screening and diagnostic tools are so important with the GU system. Mastitis is inflammation of the breast. There's multiple different inflammatory um, responses that can happen in the breast. They can have flu-like symptoms. Again, males and females have similar, can have similar symptoms with the fever, the breast pain, the nipple discharge, the retraction, nipple inversion, breast massage, pumping, bed rest, moist heat, stress management. Are they breastfeeding? This comes into play importantly as well. Are they having purulent discharge? If so, and they're breastfeeding, do we need to have that discussion with mom about, okay, listen, we're not sure. We've obtained a culture. We're waiting. You're going to have to pump and dump, and we're going to have to find other means for you to be able to feed baby. Breast cancer is most common cancer in American women. Invasive breast cancer is often preceded by carcinoma in situ. Lesions of the ductal or lobular distribution. Again, mammograms, doing screenings, ultrasound if that mammogram is abnormal. And again, you refer out. If this is abnormal, you refer out to the specialists. They're going to know what to do for management. They're going to know what further testing, treatment, invasive procedures need to be done. Fertility problems can be caused by multiple different conditions. Do you make healthy gametes? Do you have a failure of those healthy gametes to come in proxicity with the sperm? Inability of the egg to attach to the lining, or is it just an inability to carry the pregnancy to term? They've had multiple miscarriages in that first trimester. Doing a good family health history and a health history on the patient to understand this will gauge you in how you're going to direct their referral process and help them with their fertility issues. Testing is not just women. Look at the men with their semen analysis. Look at progesterone levels. Look at hormone levels. All of these to rule out other causes. Hyperprolactinemia. Again, if you are not comfortable to at least start the baseline workup, get in touch with somebody who is to get things started before you can get them referred out. Premenstrual syndrome and uh, dysphoric disorder, physical, psychological symptoms, and the second or luteal phase of the menstrual cycle. These can be headaches, mood changes, nausea, vomiting. Multiple different symptoms can happen. Most women know when they're going to have them, and usually there's a pattern that it follows. Talk to your patient. Find out their history. Menopause. Patient has not menstruated for a year, usually between the ages of 48 to 55. We know their estrogen levels fall, so then we know they're going to be at risk for atrophic vaginitis and these other conditions secondary to becoming menopausal. And remember, if they have not had a period for a year consistently and they start having bleeding, that warrants further workup. Amenorrhea, primary amenorrhea, failure to menstruate by age 15 with uh, secondary sex characteristics. Remember, if they have a very active lifestyle, sports, those types of things, this can happen. Also, with eating disorders, this can happen. So, really taking a good history and understanding your patient is going to help with this. Secondary amenorrhea is the absence of menstruation for three or more consecutive months after they have achieved menarch. What is menarch? They've already had their first period. So then we know they have the secondary amenorrhea. What is the cause? Is it stress? Is it because they're not taking a break from their birth control patch? Are they pregnant? All of these things come into play. Dysmenorrhea, painful menses. Again, multiple complaints can be associated with this. It's all based on the subjective from your patient. Endometriosis is a painful chronic disease with that overgrowth of the uterine uh, wall. Management, there really is no cure. Um, using birth control pills, over-the-counter contraceptives has been shown to be effective due to the hormones in them. Um, NSAIDs are effective, hormones, laparoscopy. And again, you refer them out to GYN if you can't get it under control. Uterine fibroids, benign small asymptomatic tumors, 
in the myometrium, risk factors, never being pregnant, age 30 to 50, obesity, sedentary lifestyle. Um, oftentimes there's a family history of uterine fibroids. Precancerous lesions and cancer of the cervix. Why pap smears are so important and looking for HPV. We have the Gardasil vaccination discussing risks and benefits with the patients and parents on administering this. This is the development of pre-malignant cervical lesions. It's like, hey, I'm giving you a warning. HPV is positive. You need to pay attention. Risk factors, early childbearing, multiple sex partners, early intercourse, and why you need to know the history of your patient with abnormal pap smears as well as history of cervical cancer, uterine cancer, and breast cancer in their family. Endometrial cancer is the most common of all gynecological cancers. Usually it's postmenopausal. Abnormal bleeding is usually in 80% of the cases. So why it's so important to know, when was your last period? The last time you ever had a period, a year from that, abnormal bleeding, 80% of the causes is endometrial cancer. Ovarian cancers, you have your three main classifications. The risk factors are, of course, advancing age, family history. Again, why family history is so important. We see this very commonly. Father or brother with colon cancer, not ever being pregnant, getting your periods early, or having late onset menopause. Vulvodyna is a complex multifactorial chronic vulvar pain and it's insidious. Pretty much, we really don't know why it happens. Most oftentimes, it's a secondary cause, so it warrants further investigation. And then if you don't know or can't figure it out, we refer them out. STDs, we look at the epidemi uh, epidemiology and causes. It's the most prevalent communicable diseases, increased risk for STIs. You look at, you know, like we talked about, about before the ethnic background, sexual partners, lack of health care. Also, you need to make sure you know the pregnancy status of these women. STDs and pregnancy is a big red flag. Hey, I need to be talking to OB. We need to see what we're going to do. Urinary tract infections alone can cause premature labor. You need to make sure that you are doing a full circle comprehensive health history and looking at that urinalysis, looking at the cultures, doing a pelvic exam, obtaining those cultures and see what's going on. Pathophysiology, usually if they have one STD, they get another one. Most will know what STDs they've had in the past. The diagnostic reasoning, little or no symptoms. Women tend to have more symptoms than men. Screenings, for their age group, specific conditions. Again, like we've talked about before, doing that urinalysis, doing that microscopic examination, grabbing a urine culture, doing a pelvic exam, doing cultures, and making sure you follow up. Management, correct diagnosis, prescribing the appropriate treatment, prevention, reinfection, talking about barrier methods, birth control, and then again, offering them screening. Do they need HIV, hepatitis, and syphilis screening? Have they ever had it done before? Do they get routine screenings if they've had multiple sexual partners? Education is key here. Education for risk-reducing behavior for that high-risk sexual activity is very important. The more you talk about it and discuss with the patients, the more you're going to have a decrease in reoccurrence of the infections and reoccurrence of uh, complications. And again, your textbooks, readings, and additional resources.